Hello everyone and welcome to part four in our binary logistic regression example. We only got three more tables left to go through and we're gonna uh, truck right through them. In our first table here called the classification table, uh, we want to look at this number right here. And what is that number? Well that is our percentage accuracy in classification. Okay, so I'm just gonna write it out PAC. And PAC is equal to 77 0.5% and that's something you're going to want to report. So what it means is that uh, using our model, okay, and you'll remember we have three independent variables, IQ, education, and ambition, and we have one dependent variable, will you succeed in life, yes or no, okay? And so using our model, suppose you go out in the world and you ask someone, um, you know, are you ambitious, yes or no? Um, what is your highest level of education? You know, one of these four. Um, what is your IQ? Somehow you measure their IQ on a continuous scale and you get that value. Now if you know those three things, okay, then you can, you can predict whether or not they will fall into uh, uh, the no category or the yes category. And, and when, you, when you make that prediction, when you predict whether or not they'll fall into the no category or the yes category, there's a, a chance that you'll be wrong, right? The, the model is not 100% accurate. In fact, it is 77.5% accurate. Okay, so 77.5% of the time that we do this, we make these predictions, we will be correct. So we will be incorrect for uh, approximately 22.5% uh, of the time. Okay, now that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good uh, value. And if you were to receive that in the real world, um, you would be very, very happy, right? Keep in mind, this is all hypothetical data. So this is the classification table under uh, block one, right? And But we also had the classification table under block zero, okay? And you'll see the value there was 50%. And that was because the you know SPSS, the computer, um, it looked at our, our sample and it saw that, you know, half of our uh, participants in our sample, or 60 of our, of our participants um, were, were successful in life and 60 of them were not successful in life. So just based on knowing that, um, you know, if you were to go out in the world you would, and you said everyone was successful, for example, you'd be uh, right 50% of the time. Um, but when we consider our independent variables, if we know uh, a person's um, uh, like a score um, on, on those independent variables, then we will be correct 77.5% of the time. So it shows that our model uh, has some predictive uh, capabilities. Um, this next table here, variables in the equation, uh, primarily what we're looking at is the significance of each of the, the variables and categories within. So looking down this column right here, anything that is uh, less than anything that's less than 0 0.05 is significant or is good, right? So um, IQ, that's good. Education, good. Um, education uh, ca coded as category number one, not good. Uh, category number two, not good. Uh, category number three, good. Uh, ambition, good. And the constant, okay. Um, so what that means is that uh, in terms of predictive uh, ability or in terms of uh, relationship between um, independent variables and dependent variables, um, certain people falling in certain categories um, uh, gives you more information or gives you better information. Okay, so for example, here you can see this is very significant, education um, coded as zero, right? So basically what it means is that, let me bring up my SPSS data here. Basically what it means is that here's education, right? And here's coded as zero, is high school. So if, you f if all you have is high school, um, that's, that's very, I mean, that's, that's very powerful information. Um, there's a good chance, you know, I'm just assuming based on the data that you will be, you know, not successful. Um, so that's, that's what the, the output means here. That's a very significant category, you could say, okay? Um, looking at the categories, uh, you know, category one and category two, uh, they're both insignificant. So, 
you know, I guess uh, if we look back at our data or look back at our categories or what they were referring to, um, category one and category two, you know, whether you have some college or whether you have an undergraduate degree doesn't seem to be as, you know, uh, important as if you just have high school. Um, let's go back here and you know one thing that I do want to uh, go over is the uh, odds ratio column right here okay and so what these values mean is with respect to the first category in the variable um, how many factors or, or how many more factors are you likely to um, uh, be uh, successful okay so you can see the value 8 right here okay 8 right 8 and that is belonging to education coded as three. So education coded as three, um, we're looking at postgraduate, okay? So what that means is, if you have a postgraduate degree, you are eight times more likely to be successful than if you only have a uh, high school, which is, which is gonna be, which is zero. It's not showing up, but it's zero right there. So you're eight times more likely to be in the yes category for our dependent variable if you fall into the um, uh, postgraduate uh, uh, category for our uh, education independent variable. Here we have our confidence intervals for these odds ratio values. Okay, and you know, as a matter of fact, um, looking at the confidence interval for the you know, category we were just talking about, um, it's it's anywhere between I guess two and and thirty. Um, that's a huge you know that's a huge interval. So uh, I don't seem too confident that eight is the the real value, right? It could be anywhere between two and thirty. Um, so I'd be hesitant to necessarily say that you know exactly eight. Uh, you're exactly eight times more likely to be successful uh, with a postgraduate degree than with a high school degree. Um, always take your confidence intervals into account. And the last table we have here is just uh, basically, um, it's just basically gonna highlight certain cases that did not fit the model. Um, so basically, for example, case 117, 118, and 119. You're gonna wanna look at these people. Those are, those are actually case numbers. So if I were to go to my um, data view and scroll all the way down to 118, here, 118, 109, and 120, or whatever it was. Basically, you know, these individuals, for some reason, do not fit the model. So when, um, when it predicted no, and it strongly predicted no, um, they actually succeeded um, for some reason. So these, these cases don't fit the model. They're outliers. And you're going to want to go in and check, out, check them out. Maybe they're, you know... There's something interesting about them. I don't know if you ever read the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, um, but there's a lot of interesting things about outliers that you know could could heed some uh, some additional investigation. So we've gone over a lot of stuff in in this video series. Um, if you have any questions about binary logistic regression, please feel free to send me a message. If not, stay tuned for our next uh, video in this video series called SPSS is fun. Cheers.